Today we're dealing with actuation. Eric, where are you? Just a sec. Okay, then let me start explaining. In general terms, actuation is the conversion of energy into movement. This happens, for instance, when I contract my biceps and lift my arm. Got it. Oh dear, what's this huge thing? This is a mechanical actuator. It will help us to explain actuation. I'm sorry, but we've got more elegant solutions already. Philip's results are quite exciting. Let's go and see. The micro iris you presented in episode 2 is actuated with electrowetting. How does it work? Electrowetting is a means to electrically control the wetting properties of a substrate. We can switch between a hydrophobic and a hydrophilic state and use this effect to move our liquids. And what's the driving force of electrowetting? I think this is best explained with a drawing. What we can't see in this chip is the hidden electrode. If we apply a voltage between the droplet and this electrode, electric charges accumulate here. For our micro iris, we use circular electrodes so that we can open and close the aperture in controlled steps. Now tell me, are Philip's results exciting or what? Yes, and Stefan is pursuing yet another exciting goal. He intends to imitate the eye muscles with the help of a special polymer material. Right now, our lens is actuated using stiff anchors that are driven by micromotors. We would like to replace those anchors with flexible anchors that deform thermally. They contract when they're heated and expand when they cool. And the anchors you see here are the ones Stefan wants to replace with the new material, thus acting like the ciliary muscle. But our eyes are constantly moving. I think we should go and visit the colleagues in Ilmenau. They're working on exactly this problem. Today, we are visiting the Fraunhofer Institute for Digital Media Technology. Eric's eye is being measured. Stefan, can you tell us why it is essential to know how exactly the eyes are moving? The human eye is only able to focus on a very small segment of the entire visual range. This is why Eric's eye is constantly moving when he's reading a text. How can this be transferred to micro-optics? Micro-optic devices are also quite limited when it comes to focus and imaging. With the help of mirrors and prisms, we can record several pictures of the same object. Using a computer, these pictures can be stitched together to obtain one highly resolved picture. My colleague, Moritz, and I also intend to reproduce the rapid eye movements, and we use, you'll like that, the piezo effect. Our colleagues in Freiburg use the piezo effect to move the lenses. Moritz, how does it work? If you glue two piezo layers together and interconnect them electrically, one layer expands while the other contracts. As a result, the piezo stack bends. Have a look. I've set up a round piezo actuator. If I apply a voltage, you'll see how the piezo bends. This movement is not very large, but remember, the piezo is only a few millimeters thick. And how do you fabricate such an actuator? Let's go to the machining laser. I'll show you there. These piezo discs are the basic material for our piezo actuators. The laser will cut out the desired shape. This is our finished piezo piece. Why this shape? This shape is the result of an optimization process my colleague Marcello worked on. Marcello, how do you optimize the piezo actuator? One of the ways to optimize the piezo actuator is to use topology optimization. How it works? You start with initial gas shape of your material, then through finite element analysis and iterative optimization process, you can achieve the best shape of your material in order to achieve high force, high displacement and low mass actuators. Such an actuator can be used to control the focal length of a silicone lens. Isn't it great how much we have achieved in the last three years? Yes, the priority program is a real driving force, literally.